powerful, low-priced, small-sized Linux PC. That's Raspberry Pi for you. But why should Java developers be interested? Because these, from programming small embedded devices, uh, building new computers, robots, and everything in between. Raspberry Pi introduces a new world of programming electronics and the low energy consumption by Java programs on embedded devices makes it a good choice too. The possibilities are limitless, but also confusing. Don't worry, the session will help you get started and inspire you to explore further. Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm your host, Mala Gupta. Now, let me add our speaker to the stream. Hello. Hi, Hi Hello, Frank. Mara. First of all, thank you so much for accepting the invitation to speak. It's a pleasure to have you here. Same. I'm very happy that I can be the guest of this uh, great series of posts and, and videos that you're making. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all ours and um, to, for all our viewers. And let me quickly share um, uh, about Frank. Uh, he First of all, he's an amazing person. He uh, is a longtime Java developer, author of Getting Started with Java on Raspberry Pi. He works as a Java developer for Eve. He blogs on webtechy.p, which is his own website. And you can see his articles on a lot of other uh, blogging spaces and uh, websites, including Java Magazine. He also contributes to the Pi4j project. Uh, Frank, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned something interesting about the name of uh, the company, why it was named Eve. So would you like yeah. to share that? Uh, yes. Uh, so the owners of the company I work for are big fans of Star Wars and other uh, movies, science fiction movies. And the robot that we are building, I will share uh, pictures uh, in the presentation, looks a bit like mm -hmm. Wally. -E. I don't know if you've seen the movie. And at the end of the movie, Wally -E falls in love with another robot, which is called Eve, which is uh, strangely mm -hmm. pronounced digitally. And yeah, mm -hmm. we found some inspiration in some of these movies for both our products and the names and, and everything that we are building. That's, that's really interesting. And uh, everyone, before I let Frank take uh, the stage, let me share some quick housekeeping details with you. Um, this stream would be uh, uh, hosted on IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel and also on JetBrains Twitch channel. Uh, during the session, if you have any questions, uh, don't wait till the end of the session. Type in as you uh, would like to ask the questions. Our team would answer the questions as you type them. And we would also ask Frank all the questions towards the end of the session or uh, in between if they are kind of showstoppers. <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, if you like today's session, I, which I hope you will, do not miss to like the video. Now, Frank, I'll let you take the stage. Um, have fun. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to talk first a bit about what I'm doing with Java on the Raspberry Pi and why. And at the end, uh, in the second part, uh, we will look into an example project and what we can do with IntelliJ in combination uh, with Raspberry Pi. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Um, like uh, Mal already mentioned, you can find me on Twitter. I have my own blog. I live in Belgium. Uh, I've been programming quite some time since I st all started for me with uh, Commodore 64. Um, people of my generation will definitely remember this kind of computer. They had no, had didn't have a lot of memory or capabilities, but still you could do uh, really amazing things uh, at that time already and really learn to program. <clears throat> and that's actually what I like. Now with the Raspberry Pis, they are much more powerful, but they are a lot cheaper and you have the same experience of, of yeah, entering a completely new world. Um, as mentioned, I work for Eve, a company where we built this amazing uh, personal robot. At this moment, it's a grass mower, but uh, we're adding new features, new possibilities. Uh, and soon we also want to involve the maker world uh, and do amazing things with uh, these robots. Um, but the topic I want to talk about today, um, 
I got introduced to this by uh, being a coach at Kodojo, which is a club for kids where kids are introduced into programming, but also presenting, working together. Um, and the coaches of these events bring their own knowledge to these events. Um, and that's where uh, coaches, other coaches brought Arduino and Raspberry Pis. So they really show what you can do with these uh, amazing little uh, inexpensive computers <clears throat> and microcontrollers. Um, I wanted to create something for myself. At the, uh, at the end, it ended up with a book where I described my whole journey of what I learned uh, trying to do Java development on a Raspberry Pi. I am working on an update of the LeanPub book. So if you now buy it uh, on LeanPub, you will get new uh, updates in the next weeks and months with an update of yeah, the current state of uh, Java on the Raspberry Pi. Um, during the writing of this book, so um, I explained how Java uh, evolved, uh, how you what you can do with it on a Raspberry Pi by controlling the pins of a Raspberry Pi. There are different example applications uh, described in this book, um, all to control different electronic components uh, like a, a LED matrix, um, this little clock segment display that you have, an LCD display. So all these different types of components uh, which are available for a very low price. And yeah, there is even a Java Spring application also that can be used on a Raspberry Pi in combination uh, with electronics. And the end of the book is actually the project I wanted to create being a Java FX user interface uh, combined with uh, messaging, uh, Mosquito MQTT broker, an Arduino controlling LED strips, now bringing all this together um, in um, one application. Um, now, a very quick introduction of what is a Raspberry Pi. Actually, it's a very small PC. It's a Linux PC. Uh, everything you expect from a Linux PC is there. You have networking, you have displays, you have uh, everything that you want. Um, and you have them in different form factors. The most popular one now is the Raspberry Pi 4B, um, the biggest one, with, because it has uh, the most connections. You can connect two uh, 4K displays uh, on it. And you also have the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a lot smaller. Of course, it's a smaller processor also, so there are a bit less uh, capabilities there, but you have it for 15 euros. Uh, the, the newest Raspberry Pi, which was launched last year, Raspberry Pi Zero Two, uh, has wireless, um, has a Linux PC, um, but it only costs 15 euro. And another special one is the compute module, Compute 4. Um, it has a lot of different versions depending on the amount of memory and capabilities, um, but it's meant to be uh, combined with another baseboard uh, with all the connections you want for uh, your project. So last year, there were two uh, new Raspberry Pi boards uh, launched. First, the Pico, uh, which is only $4. Now, the Pico is actually not a Linux PC. It's a microcontroller. Um, so you can compare it more with an Arduino, for instance. Uh, and then the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W uh, for $15. Uh, these were launched uh, last year. Um, Raspberry Pi is not only used for fun little home projects, you can actually do a lot of big, amazing uh, stuff with it. Uh, these are only two examples I want to show you here. Uh, one is by Chris Benson for Oracle. He built this amazing rack with 1024 Raspberry Pis, building a mega cluster of Raspberry Pis. Um, that big rack was finished just before Corona hit because otherwise you would definitely have seen it uh, at some conference in between. Um, hopefully uh, it will be uh, relaunched uh, now in the new conferences. And then Ivan Kulshov is also making something based on this Compute 4 module. Uh, so that's only a board that you have to attach to a baseboard. And he built this an amazing blade uh, where you can have 24 blades in one rack unit. Uh, so again, you can build some kind of uh, a Kubernetes cluster or anything that you want to experiment with can be done with these Raspberry Pi boards. <clears throat> now, um, why uh, Java on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, because initially uh, the Raspberry Pi was designed for Python, you can say. So that's also where the Pi comes from and uh, from number Pi, but also from Python. Uh, but actually, Java runs just as well on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and that's, as a Java developer, that's what I wanted to experiment with and see what I could uh, achieve. 
Um, I don't think I have to mention that Java is evolving very fast in the last years since uh, the release cycle has changed to a six month release cycle. Um, and in these six month release uh, versions are always improvements which are also uh, valid for us for embedded uh, on a Raspberry Pi, but also just as a Java developer, uh, new features, uh, new possibilities in the language, which makes it easier for you as a developer to develop something, uh, but also run it on an uh, embedded device. Um, even Oracle and themselves believe that uh, both Java, Java FX are a Great combination uh, with Raspberry Pi. You can find some uh, articles uh, I wrote for Oracle uh, Java magazine. Um, but these are a few of the examples that we will also see uh, in this presentation. Another thing uh, which I wasn't really aware of until I found this article is that Java is actually eco-friendly. Um, if you compare uh, different languages and you want to do the same kind of um, uh, method, um, then, and if you compare it to the C language, which is the the, the compare factor in this uh, in this research, um, then you see that for Java you need about two times the amount of energy to do a similar function between C and Java. If you look at Python, you need seventy six times the same energy. So, um, if you need an argument to defend Java on embedded then this is also an important one. And definitely now with uh, energy prices going up, uh, energy and eco-friendliness of Java, uh, I wasn't aware of it, but there is indeed an eco-friendly flag on, an, on the language. Now, if you start with uh, Raspberry Pi, it's a Linux PC, so you need an operating system. You have a lot of choices. Um, if you want specific use cases like uh, a camera uh, control system or uh, arcade game things, you can have different uh, operating systems for this. But if you just get started, uh, just look for Raspberry Pi OS. This is a full Linux Debian-based uh, Debian -based operating system. There is a 32-bit and a 64-bit version uh, for it. If you take the full version of this operating system, you will even have Java pre-installed. And if you have some history in, in Raspberry Pi, then uh, maybe Rasb Raspbian OS will be more familiar to, for you. But actually, it's the same thing. It's just evolved from Raspbian OS to uh, full Raspberry Pi OS. Um, so if you take this full Raspbian, uh, Raspberry Pi or Raspbian OS, uh, you will see that there are a lot of pre-installed tools available there. Uh, for kids to start programming, you have Scratch, but also you have other things. Um, Visual Studio Code, for instance, runs on the Raspberry Pi, but it's not pre-installed. You can uh, just install it with sudo apt. Uh, install code, I think. Um, there is no IntelliJ IDE yet, uh, which is compatible with Raspberry Pi because it runs on an ARM processor, but who knows? Uh, because um, the new Macs have uh, some kind of an ARM processor uh, and IntelliJ uh, has been uh, adapted to run on these new Macs, maybe it will also run on the Raspberry Pi one day. Um, so, as I said, uh, if you have this full Raspberry Pi OS operating system, you start it for the first time, you have to create your user, do some updates. And if you then open the terminal and you do Java minus version, you will have indeed a Java version available. So it's uh, 11, I think, at this moment, which is still there. <coughs> but that means that you can start writing Java, compiling Java, or running Java programs on this uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, um, SD Kalman, I hope you know this tool. Um, it's a tool which helps you to manage Java versions on your device. Um, now, I have been um, assisting in this project a little bit um, to make SD Kalman also run on a Raspberry Pi because you have different versions. You have 32-bit uh, operating systems, 64-bit operating systems. But now you can, with SD Kalman, um, switch between Java versions on your Raspberry Pi. So um, I made this little uh, recording. Um, as you can see, SD Kalman is available um, and is installed with just one line of code. Um, 
And as you see, the, so I started here with Java, with an operating system without Java. Um, and then if you do a, a list of Java versions available for the Raspberry Pi, this is on a 64-bit uh, version of the operating system. You see that you have a long, long list of Java versions that you can install. Uh, so let's just keep uh, install one provided by Oracle. So it's just in the command SDK install Java and then this uh, flag. It takes some time because yeah, it downloads, of course, this whole package. Uh, it will repackage and uh, install it <clears throat> for you. So SDK man is available for both Linux and Mac. It's a really great tool. Um, I use it the whole time to switch between different versions of Java. You can see that this is a 64-bit version of the operating system. And Raspberry Pi, uh, the four has four cores uh, of a Cortex uh, a 72 processor, so that's an ARM processor. We give it some time to uh, repackage Java. Can we just move a bit forward, installing, tup, tup, tup. So, and if it's done, you can just do Java minus version, and you see that we now have this Java 17 installed on the Raspberry Pi. So that means with SDK man, you can just switch between different versions or install your first one, uh, whatever uh, suits your uh, need. Um, <clears throat> and also thanks to SDK man and this fast release cycle of Java, um, for instance, a few weeks ago, Java version 18 was released and already the next day, you could install it on a Raspberry Pi thanks to SDK man. And you can even see in the screenshot there are also versions of uh, Java 19 early access available already. So if you want to experiment with the latest versions of Java on your Raspberry Pi, you can immediately do so. What I also uh, like a lot about Java is actually Java FX. So this is an extra uh, package that you can use uh, to build graphical user interfaces. Um, it's not part of OpenJDK itself, so you have to install it as um, a Maven package, uh, or you can get it from the Gluon website as a different, uh, a separate uh, dependency. Um, because Java FX is tailored for the operating system that it's running on, you have different versions, again, for Mac, uh, Windows, uh, and again, the Raspberry Pi. Now, Java FX uh, allows you to build uh, user interfaces, so it has a lot of components to do so. Uh, Jacob Jenkov has a great tutorial website explaining all of these uh, components. Um, but the community has created a lot of extra components. So if you want to create a word-like application with that kind of top menu, uh, you have the FX ribbon, which can uh, allows you to build something like that. Um, I'm a big fan of Gerrit Grunwald's work. So he's one of those uh, Java FX experts who shares a lot of his um, work on both his own blog and uh, he has different um, dependencies that he shares on the Maven repository. Tiles FX is one of them and it allows you to build this kind of dashboard-like applications. You will see an example uh, soon. Now, uh, Java FX also has a direct rendering mode on the Raspberry Pi, which allows you to build something like a kiosk-like application, meaning that you actually hide um, the desktop of the Raspberry Pi and you only show your own uh, application. Um, and it also has this kind of functionality. You can create games, and if you look at the... Uh, frames per second this is nearly 60 frames per second so this little game this space fx game uh, again created by Gerrit Grunwald is running on a raspberry pi at 60 frames uh, per second all thanks to the work done by gluon and the community behind java fx to make it uh, as good as possible <clears throat> sorry to make it as good as possible uh, on the raspberry pi um, now, another advantage um, of the Raspberry Pi, and actually that's the biggest one, uh, in my opinion, is the header, these 40 pins. These pins, which allow you to connect a lot of different electronic components um, that you can connect to this Raspberry Pi. 
it uh, allows you to connect a lot of different uh, components. Huh? So you see, for instance, uh, I2C, SPI, or different protocols, which allows you to communicate with uh, electronic components. If you want to get started in this world, um, which then best thing to do is to start with an electronics starter kit. One you, know, you see here now, uh, you can find a lot of them on eBay or uh, in your electronics uh, shop where you uh, can find a lot of these. Uh, the price depends all of there is a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino included with the kit, but you will find them from 20 uh, euros and up. Um, now, the big fun comes when you combine a Raspberry Pi Java and or JavaVix with Pi4j. Now Pi4j is a project um, which helps you to communicate with electronic components from Java code. So um, it is a dependency you add to a Java project. So you just write simple Java code. But in this library, it contains uh, native libraries which actually talk to the GPIOs, these pins of the Raspberry Pi. So they translate all this magic happening with electronic components and all these different uh, protocols uh, and translate it to something which is more Java. So that's easier to understand as a Java developer. <clears throat> this project was uh, started by Robert Savage. Uh, he's an American guy. I think it was in 2012. At some point, uh, Oracle was developing something similar to be included in Java, but that project uh, never took off. So Pi4j is now one of the main um, libraries that you can use to interact with uh, electronic components. Now, there was a, a big version, version one, which was uh, um, maintained until uh, summer of uh, last year. Um, and we had some, uh, releases of it um, in 2021. Uh, but actually, that was the end of version one of Pi4j, and for several reasons. Um, actually, the main reason was that this na native library to communicate with these GPIOs is wiring Pi, and that project itself got deprecated. Uh, there was also a problem between the numbering of the pins, this uh, pin numbering, so you have different standards, uh, it was using the wiring pi pin numbering. You see it in this little uh, image. Uh, but actually, uh, most projects also uh, in Arduino world and use PCM numbering. And that's what's more known by the most users. So there was some confusion about this pin numbering. So actually, uh, a few years ago, there was uh, work started uh, to build a version 2. But on the other hand, you have a very big uh, user base of Pi4j. So we could not break it too much um, because you can see that uh, a lot of projects are making use of uh, Pi4j. Um, for instance, just a few examples. This is a very fun project. It's a French uh, artist, I think, a street theater robot. So inside is a lot of wires, as you can see, but also a Raspberry Pi, which is the heart of this project to control different screens and uh, other effects of this uh, street uh, robot. Um, a more um, uh, an industrial uh, application is this uh, medical cabinet. Um, as you can see, it's a, a a lot of drawers. It has medicines inside, so it's used in hospitals. If uh, they have to take out medicines, the green lights indicate which medicine has to be taken out. And if someone puts his hand in the wrong uh, place, then uh, a red uh, let is lit. So it helps people to pick the right medicine. It's a combination of different electronics components, but at the heart, again, it's uh, a Raspberry Pi controlling this whole thing. Now, as I mentioned, so there was started a project to make a new version of this Pi4j library, which is version 2. Um, it was released in August uh, last year. Wiring Pi, that native library, got replaced by Pi GPIO and some other possibilities. And it now uses this PCM pin numbering, uh, which would, should, uh, would make it easier for users to get started uh, into this kind of projects.
Uh, you can find everything on GitHub. It's split up in different projects where you have the core, you have different libraries, plugins, but also a lot of example applications. So I invite you to uh, visit github.com slash pi4j and you will find a lot of uh, information there. Um, this is the structure of the core library. As you can see, it's very split up in different blocks, uh, which should make it uh, easier to maintain in the future and also extend. Um, Robert Savage himself is not very active anymore in the project, but we got the support of the FHNW University of Switzerland, where they use Java uh, to teach both uh, programming and electronics combined with Raspberry Pi and Pi4J to the students. Robert von Berg also uh, joined the project. So we have now a lot of demo applications, documentation, all provided by uh, the university, by students, but also by a lot of users and contributors uh, of this project. Um, together with this new version two, a new website was launched. Um, this website wants to be the source of truth for all things for Java on Raspberry Pi. So you will not find uh, only find information about electronics uh, and uh, Java, but also about how to use Java FX on Raspberry Pi, how to install Java, um, how to install Java on older versions of the Raspberry Pi with an uh, other type of processor. So you'll find all this information on this website. Now let's look at one very small, simple example. Uh, if you have a Hello World application in Java, just outputting Hello World, then in electronics, blinking a LED is actually the Hello World application. Uh, so you want to blink a LED. Um, and this is explained in this minimal example application. Uh, um, if you look into the sources of this application, you will see that there's actually a lot more uh, commands compared to code, uh, again, to make this uh, easy to understand and to find everything. Uh, so you first have to initialize Pi4j. It will load some modules, uh, Java modules. And then, for instance, uh, configuring a button, which is an input, a digital input. It's uh, either on or off. Uh, um, you have some uh, settings that you can create, and then you can add a listener. Now, as you can see, this is pure Java code. For every Java developer, this should be clear and very readable. Huh? Um, and that's what Pi4j aims to do. So you want to have pure Java code to interact with electronics. So in this case, if the button is pressed, then uh, the number of presses is counted. <clears throat> On the other side, we have a digital output, which is actually the LED. Huh? Again, you have this builder pattern to define all the settings of this LED. Um, and then you have just a repeater, uh, which just blinks the LED, and depending on the num number of times the button was pressed, uh, it will slow down. Um, this project uses Java modules, so it will, uh, with Maven, produce uh, a directory containing all the modules used to run this application, and it even uh, contains a run.sh file, a file which can be used to start your application. Now, if we look how this, uh, what the result of this application is, uh, of course, this is not rocket science. As I said, it's just blinking a LED. So in the background, you see the logging output of the application. The LED starts to blink. And each time the button is pressed, it starts to blink a bit faster. And after five times, the application is stopped. As you can see, this is a very basic example. <clears throat> just want to show you what you can do uh, with Java and uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, another example I want to show you with Java FX uh, is actually a combination of Java FX and FXGL. FXGL is a game engine written in Java and Java FX by Almas. Also a very great open source project uh, allows you to create a lot of different kind of games. Um, but for Oracle uh, Java Magazine, I wrote an example uh, where we took this kind of uh, joystick, an arcade joystick, again, a very cheap kit. I think it's about 20 euros again, um, which you can connect to your Raspberry Pi and allows you to control uh, any kind of application. For instance, a game, oops, let me start it. <clears throat> 
So again, in the background, you see this application starting. It was not optimized for speed. As you can see, it doesn't run very smooth yet. It was a very small example. And I'm, by the way, I'm a very bad game player, as you can see. Uh, the number of lives I have in this game increments or decrements very fast. Just to show you what you can create with Java, Java VIX, and some electronic components uh, all together with the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Um, now I want to show you uh, a little bit more of what you can do with these uh, sensors. And I have some, uh, let me show you. And um, I have some, um, a crow pie, which is actually a very fun uh, device. It's uh, a little suitcase which has screen and it has a lot of components. So what you can see here is, so there is a Raspberry Pi. There are some outputs, uh, a LED matrix, LCD. There are a lot of buttons here. There are some sensors, a distance sensor, a motion sensor, sound sensor, all this kind of uh, components is there. Now, what is the big advantage of this kit? Everything is pre-wired. So if it doesn't work, it's probably not because there is something wrong in your wiring, but it's there's something wrong in your code. Uh, as a developer, that can be very frustrating, but that's actually the case. Now, this is the Crow Pi 1 I'm showing you here. Um, that's the first one with a small screen. There is also a bigger one. Oh, I have one too. Uh, and here there's a keyboard and under the keyboard, you have the same kind of components. Um, these kits come around uh, $200, $300, all depending if you have uh, a Raspberry Pi included or not. Um, so they are a lot more expensive than uh, just a starter kit, but they can be a really great tool also in education, <clears throat> for instance, uh, or in uh, a coding club. Um, also, again, uh, thanks to the Swiss University, we have a CrowPi operating system. This is an operating system uh, based on the official Raspberry Pi operating system, but with some tweaks and improvements for Java development and also development uh, on this CrowPi. Um, so you can just get started with the official Raspberry Pi OS, but if you take the CrowPi OS, um, it's a fork, you can say, of uh, Raspberry Pi OS with some tweaks uh, and improvements. Uh, you can find it on pi4j.com slash download. Um, and there are different versions available there, but you can download just the zip file uh, and use the Raspberry Pi imager tool to burn it on an SD card and run it on a Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> One of the nice uh, improvements that has done is that you can see the IP number on the screen. Uh, because if you have a lot of devices hanging around attached to a screen, uh, it's not always clear where your device uh, is and what is the IP and how you can connect to it. And thanks to this, yeah, you can do that a lot more easier. Um, there is also um, a Java project, including code to uh, control all the components inside this scroll pipe. So if you go to github.com, pi4j, and then the pi4j example crowpy project, you can just download this whole project, uh, package it on your Raspberry Pi, uh, run it with this sudo java command, and then follow uh, the output in the terminal and start uh, uh, code from for every sensor uh, which is there. Um, and the fun thing is, um, Inside this project is also configuration files for IntelliJ. So these um, configuration files will help you to run this code on your PC, but execute it on the Raspberry Pi, also allowing you to debug it. So that's, uh, and that's what I will show you uh, in a moment. Um, everything is explained in the readme. There are a lot of settings that you can do and what you will definitely need, uh, again, like this IP address to connect from your PC to this Raspberry Pi uh, and run your uh, example code. Um, the whole process is also explained uh, on a separate page on the Pi4j website. So there is a develop with IntelliJ IDE. Um, so you can find all the uh, information about this process there 
what you need to configure, every step you have to take from cloning uh, the repository until configuring that IP number and uh, running your application. Okay, um, so let me switch now to my IntelliJ. So I have this project open here for you, um, and I want to try to show you a few things. So what this project actually contains, um, so everything is an application. So um, you have all these different sensors and uh, components in this GrowPy. So for every of these uh, sensors and components, an application has been created, all extending from this uh, or implementing this uh, interface. So if you look into these applications, um, and let me take a fun one, the buzzer app. So there is a buzzer um, in this uh, GrowPy. Now this buzzer can make some noise. That's the idea of a buzzer. Uh, and by adjusting some of the settings, you can even play a song with it. So we have this buzzer application, which implements this interface. Huh? Um, and then you have the specific code for this buzzer application. So you have a definition of all the available notes uh, that this uh, buzzer can play. Uh, then there's some tempo settings. And then there is an execution. So we're going to play this little song here uh, based on these notes. Um, and actually, the execution of the program is here. Uh, so it will run through all the notes uh, and play them for the given duration and then some silence and so on. So let me put, uh, so I have a breakpoint here. And now, I'm, I'm not used to do live coding, so I this has to go wrong, I think, but let's try that. <laughs> um, first thing I do, I start the remote debug session. No, wrong. I start the CrowPy debug. So this is starting my application now on the CrowPy. So you see uh, my CrowPy is on this IP address and it is now waiting for debug session at port 5005. Now let's start also the debug session. So at this moment, um, what you see here is my IntelliJ on my Mac. And I'm now trying to do a debugging on um, my Raspberry Pi. Now, if I see here, you can see that uh, we were here at the application waiting for a debug session. Now we have a debug session connected, and now it shows all the possibilities of what this application can do. Huh? And we were having a breakpoint in the buzzer application, so let's start with a four. Like you see. So, and I find this really amazing. So I am developing on a Mac, but my code is actually being executed on a Raspberry Pi next to me. Huh? So uh, on this Raspberry Pi, huh? this Raspberry Pi inside here huh? is actually executing this code and the buzzer is somewhere here. I don't know if you heard it in the background, You see, each time I say, yeah, uh, continue with my, pro my, my program, you hear a, a tone. So if I now just remove my breakpoint and let the application run. Then you see that it's playing all these notes which were defined in this area. Voila. Hopla. So this has uh, executed and has finished with code zero. So my application has been executed uh, on this Raspberry Pi uh, and I was able to debug it. So I could debug my Java code uh, within my IntelliJ on my PC while it was being executed uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm not gonna debug everything. Uh, I just want to show you a few of the other possibilities um, of running Java code on a Raspberry Pi. So let's execute this again. 
Um, so it's not in debug mode now. It didn't wait for this debug port. It's just uh, running my application now. Um, let's see what we have. So we have uh, the let matrix, for instance. Let's execute this program with a nine. So you see, that's my little LED matrix, an eight by eight LED matrix there. So it's showing crow pi with some arrows and pi 4j. So you can fully interact with all these uh, components uh, which are there on the crow pi. Uh, the LCD example. You see it there on top, hello world. So for all these components, there are demo applications within this project available, within this repository, uh, all showing you how you can interact with these components, how you can control them, how you can read data back from them. Um, and again, with a lot of documentation, both on the Py4j website and in the sources themselves. Okay. Uh, uh, there was uh, a nice one. Let me check. Can I show you something else? Uh, well, the light sensor. I have no idea what it will show you. Ah, the light is on. So there's a light sensor, and if I now put my hand somewhere on top of it, voila, you see that it changes from uh, dark to light. Okay. Um, some very basic examples I wanted to show you uh, with this full crow pie project. Of course, you have these sensors all available as separate components, so you don't need the crow pie itself but you can just uh, run it on any uh, component that you can connect to this uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay, back to the presentation. Um, this LCD example that I was showing you uh, with this very little uh, display here on top. Um, so if you look into the code, it has this application which is controlling this LCD display. It has a component, which is actually the electronic component and how it should interact. Um, in this case on the Crow Pi, it has a chip. So there's a separate class to how you communicate with this chip. And this chip uses the I2C uh, communication protocol, which is part of Pi4j. So this whole flow of applications, components uh, is all uh, clearly separated in the code of this Crow Pi project. Uh, and if you are interested in this, you will definitely find all the separate uh, codes available there. For instance, for the LCD text, within the application, you will find examples of writing a text to a separate specific line, um, also moving the cursor, uh, blinking the cursor, stuff like that. So all that is available there. Um, maybe you have seen this in the video passing by this little house, uh, like this, LCD component here uh, with the window in the wall. So actually that's just an, an array of bytes uh, with bits in there defining the image uh, which is shown on the display. So it, it becomes very visible from your Java code um, to create some kind of image that you can see on this uh, component. Now, based on uh, this CrowPy project, um, I wrote a series of uh, three articles for um, HiveMQ. Um, HiveMQ is a uh, message broker. Uh, they have a free version of their service, uh, the cloud service, which allows you to connect 100 devices for free to one broker, a message broker. So what I did for this project, um, I created um, uh, a little application in Java using the sensors of the Crow Pi to send values to this broker. And on another Raspberry Pi, you have this TilesFX, Java FX application, uh, which receives all this data from this message broker uh, and shows all the results uh, on this uh, one display. So you see again with this Crow Pi, uh, moving it around, uh, having your hand on top of it and moving it up and down, you see the values changing uh, of these uh, sensor measurements on this uh, dashboard application. So all that kind of stuff um, 
it's both fun. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't require a lot of code because, again, it's Java. You have all these uh, libraries available. Uh, there's a lot of stuff which is uh, already done for you, so you can just reuse it. For instance, uh, sending messages from Java to HiveMQ, you have a lot of libraries. HiveMQ has their own uh, MQTT library. So all this is very easy to do. Uh, and it's well described on a lot of blog posts, not only from me, of course, but a lot of people in this community share a lot of what they are doing uh, in all kinds of uh, example projects. Um, if you want to want, uh, want to read more about this, um, there is a Raspberry Pi section on fuji.io. I hope you all know this website. Uh, it's not that old. Uh, it started, I think, two years ago. Uh, it's a website uh, by and for the Java community. You find a lot of info about Java releases, but also every day at least one post with an example use case of Java or some uh, investigation of what technologies are better. But um, there is a section de dedicated to Raspberry Pi where you find a lot of these uh, ex example applications I've been talking about and also others uh, like running Gbang, SDK Man, uh, using Vadin on Raspberry Pi, all that kind of projects uh, are described there. Um, let me conclude and then we can go to the questions, I think. Um, if you want to get started, buy yourself a Raspberry Pi. I know it can be hard at this time because, yeah, there is a ship shortage also in Raspberry Pis. From time to time, new batches are released. Uh, maybe you'll have a little bit uh, of time to wait, but there are definitely boards available soon. Uh, Java and JavaFX on a Raspberry Pi, definitely, yes. Even JavaFX graphical user interfaces on that $15 Raspberry Pi Zero 02 it runs and it runs very smooth and it starts fast and it's really great to combine your Java knowledge with this kind of uh, stuff. And doing electronics with Java, yeah, again, definitely, yes, I hope I could convince you. Uh, look at Pi4j, it's an open source project. It all depends on the community. Um, it would be nice to have some extra contributors again. So please feel free to either use it, document it, report issues, you come back with IDs, everything is uh, very well received and uh, I'm one of the maintainers and I hope to see a lot of contributors back. Uh, if you want to read more, you can visit my blog webtechy.be. I am on Twitter, I am on FuJ. And yeah, I can only invite you to start building, experimenting, having fun and trying out uh, all these uh, kind of things. And yeah, uh, one more thing. Um, Raspberry Pi, it's not only a, a thing uh, to use for electronics, uh, it's also a camera. As you can see, what I was using to film this uh, Crow Pi is actually uh, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there is also a Raspberry Pi there filming me. Um, I also described this process on uh, my own blog, how you can use a Raspberry Pi as a separate camera uh, to do this kind of stuff. Um, you can, of course, buy a very expensive camera this is a camera of 100 and I think 40 dollars, uh, allowing you uh, to record anything that you want. So that's a bit my story. This is what I wanted to tell you. I think I'm still in time and I hope there are some questions. Mala, can we come back to you for that? First of all, Frank, thank you so much. It was an amazing session. We have so many questions for you. <laughs> and, and everyone loved the session. So let me go I think to we my... Smile. <laughs> oh. I see there are a lot of questions. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, can you hear me? Can you see me? Because I yeah. can Okay, okay, perfect. So uh, we asked uh, what everyone is using Raspberry Pi for. Uh, are they even using it? What for? So we have a lot of answers there. Uh, Jazz777 mentioned that he's already using it for he or she for uh, their model trains. Matt is using it with the Pi 4J. Muscha is looking for getting started. They have a lot of questions. Jason already developing for fun. Mark is using Kotlin on Raspberry Pi. Uh, another one, Web Relay Control 10, Raspberry Pi, 
Raspberry Zero with Pi 4J and a lot of others. I don't oh, want to. But, yes. So um, let me start with the first question. So folks want a list of the projects uh, that make use of Pi 4J. Do you already have a list somewhere which um, they can... No, and actually that's something I really want to extend on the Pi 4G website. So we have a featured projects on the Pi 4G okay. website. Um, okay. And we have some people already contributing back their projects. So uh, someone created a 3D game. Um, what was the name again? I will tell you in one moment. Um, and he mentioned this somewhere on Twitter. I ended up on it and I asked him to describe what he has done. And he mm -hmm. actually contributed back a complete page on the featured projects section of the website. Uh, it's the G-Monkey engine, which is a 3D game engine, uh, again, for Java. But he fully described how he connected a joystick uh, to control mm -hmm. this game, again, with Pi4J. And an, another type of joystick than I used for the arcade game uh, because he needed to convert an analog signal because my joystick is just push buttons forward, backward. He has a joystick which has um, uh, the further you press, the harder you go drive in the, in the game. Um, so this is explained in the project. Then someone created a library on top of Pi4J for different sensors and chips. So again, this is uh, contributed back to the project. So if someone has an interesting project with Pi4J, I really lo would love uh, to add it to the featured projects. Uh, people can contribute back to the documentation website as it's again a GitHub project. Um, or they can just contact me and uh, we can write something together. That's that's great because that was another question, how they could contribute to uh, the code that you are working on. So uh, we would probably add all those links to the description of this yeah, video so great. that anyone who's watching uh, the video can access those links. That would be great. Um, so the other question is, um, should I start to use SDK Man also on a new M1 MacBook uh, because it works well with IntelliJ IDEA? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So of course, Intel IntelliJ also allows you to install different Java versions. Eh? So you yes. can do that from IntelliJ. Um, but SDK Common is just a great tool. Um, mm -hmm because it will also list you Java, will make sure that the home uh, value is correct, set correctly, that you can just run Java like you want. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it side by side with, with uh, IntelliJ, I guess. Okay, uh, the other question is again from a newbie and they mentioned I never had a Raspberry Pi and do I take the usual precautions regarding static charge or is it a bit more uh, hardy? Uh, so Ilya from our team mentioned that yes, they need to be more, uh, they need to have uh, some precaution regarding that part. Yeah. Uh, so that also, I want to add a bit to uh, this question. Are there any do's and don'ts for the newbies? Because I saw a lot of people wanted to get started using Raspberry Pi. So any yeah. one or two points that you want to share with them? Um, if someone comes from Arduino, you have to take into mm -hmm. account that most Arduinos work on 5 volt. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of these sensor components also need 5 volt. 5 volt, but the mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi itself works on 3.3. So mm -hmm. theoretically, you can blow up uh, such a pin uh, mm -hmm. by putting 5 volt on it. I've abused a lot of Raspberry Pis, and I didn't destroy any yet. yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in my opinion, they are pretty strong. Um, I once put 5 volt on an ground pin which you should actually never do and my mm -hmm. screen went completely dead but i just repowered it and back to normal so mm -hmm. um yeah it's electronics you have to be a bit careful uh mm -hmm. definitely if you charge yourself if you uh feel electricity if you touch your your chair for instance then yeah that's not mm -hmm. good for for any electronic components but actually mm -hmm. yeah they're pretty pretty strong yeah Yes, makes sense. And everyone who's watching, I know this was just one of the advice from Frank, but he already has a book out there on using Java and Raspberry Pi. Yes, that's Let the book. Look. 
So yes. <laughs> shame, shame, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> uh, and no, it's, it really helps a lot to kind of uh, learn from your experience if anyone is walking to wanting to walk that path because you've already done that. You have uh, abused a lot of Raspberry Pi yet kind of yeah. survived <laughs> a lot of other things. So, yeah. so of course, um, I, I would not say that's a shameless promotion. I would say you're just trying to help uh, the other folks. I, I see um, a good remark of someone indeed. So um, mm -hmm. one of the very fun projects with electronics are LED strips. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So um, yes. if you have a very long LED strip with a lot of LEDs and you put them on all uh, at once, they need a lot of power. Mm -hmm. That's not yes. something with the, what the Raspberry Pi can provide. So you need an additional power supply and connect it the right way. Uh, so mm -hmm. indeed that could remark. If it's just a few LEDs and a distance sensor, no problem. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of components, then you have to be a bit careful with the amount of uh, power that you use. Okay. Um, the other question is, if you opt to use a breadboard and different Raspberry Pi models, is soldering needed to do or do the pins have a means to hot plug? Uh, hot plugging is not uh, advised, but I do it all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> a breadboard can be very handy. I have this, this is called a T-cobbler cable. If you look okay. it up, you'll find it on mm -hmm. eBay for a few dollars. So actually this is just uh, a connector for the Raspberry Pi side mm -hmm. and then a T piece with pins that you plug into a, a breadboard. So this is very handy uh, if you do a lot of different experiments and want to change uh, wires and LEDs and components, then this is a very handy way of doing that. It's not necessary, mm -hmm. but it's very easy. You don't even need the T-cobbler. Eh? You can just connect these wires directly to the pins of the Raspberry Pi, but actually mm -hmm. this is a, a very handy approach. I have some. three. This is for instance, but that's the Raspberry Pi. Where is my camera? This is with the Raspberry okay. Pi Pico. So this is this $4 mm -hmm. uh, board. This mm -hmm. is also one of the examples I used for the Hive MQ uh, uh, project, where you have this mm -hmm. $4 board using a $10 Wi-Fi chip to send this distance measurements. So also this, mm -hmm. it's not Java code. That's the, the only backdrop. <laughs> Okay, so the other question is, um, I don't get the contest from when it was asked. Uh, can we use Arduino, Banana Pi, etc., or is is it only limited to RPI boots? Yeah, Banana Pi, I didn't use it myself. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Pi 4G version one was at mm -hmm. some point compatible with Banana Pi. Um, mm -hmm. The idea of Pi 4G version two, it has Java modules and you can create them yourself. And mm -hmm. if you extend from a provider, which is part of the core library, you can build your mm -hmm. own boards around it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we don't support it from Pi4j project itself yet. Mm -hmm. But if, for instance, someone would create that kind of provider for Banana Pi, um, mm -hmm. it could become, yeah, something we uh, add to the website as a feature project, or if someone wants to contribute it to the Pi4j uh, repository itself, it could also be done. Uh, there are different mm -hmm. ways. Um, I'm there in this Pi4j project as the maintainer. Um, I just want to get many people involved, um, be a bit careful about what we do with the core, and that we keep it small, maintainable, stable. Mm -hmm. But the rest, documentation, examples, uh, example projects, implementations on top of Pi4j, everything can have a place uh, within this project. Makes sense. And the next question was kind of, uh, we were expecting this question. So how does the Java code compare to say a Node.js or Python script in terms of the performance and resource usage? And would it be preferable on something like a Pi01 over the alternatives? Um, to be honest, I didn't really do comparison about performance. Um, what I once had as uh, I wrote a blog post about Java Spring on Raspberry Pi and mentioned somewhere in the footnote, and it takes 60 seconds to start up. Mm -hmm. um, and then Adam Bean, which has this uh, podcast, he challenged me, but did you try Quarkus? 
And with Quarkus, we went from 60 seconds to 15 seconds. So there are a lot of difference, even with Java, even with uh, Python, there are different ways of doing things. And one will be more performant than the other one. It all depends on what you want to achieve, actually. How fast does it need to start up? Um, why I chose Java, that's my language. That's what I used at my job. Um, and I wanted to learn something new with, with uh, the data electronics, but not really with a new language. Yeah? I did try to create a Pong game based, uh, Pong game like thing with Python. Uh, with two big buttons, something to, for, for my son to, to use in school. Huh? Um, mm -hmm. and I have to be honest, I hated the, the, the Python way of creating a user interface. Or maybe that's my lack of knowledge, but I wasn't happy with the result. And I knew as a Java and Java VIX developer, I could do something which was a lot easier to create, much better looking, um, so that's why I just use Java. I know Java. I, I know I can do anything I want to do with it. And I know it runs on the Raspberry Pi, so why not? Right. And in your presentation, you also mentioned about the energy consumption by Java programs. And you compared that with the energy consumption yeah. of uh, taking C as the benchmark. And Java yeah. was just twice what C program was using. And yeah. Python was much more. So much, I guess yeah. that also. Yeah, and that, I didn't compare it. I just found this. So this is an, yes. an, an they, this was a research project, I think, from one uh, university. So mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to believe me, but you can find this <laughs> this, uh, this uh, research somewhere on the internet. Um, so and I think they did it a few times, uh, also with newer versions, and they also come always come back with the same re same results. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's another interesting question about the usage of an emulator. So uh, can anyone who is wanting to try out, they can try out their ideas using a virtual Raspberry or an emulator be before they go to buy a physical device, the way we used to um, do a long time back. <laughs> I, I tried it some time ago. You have uh, QEMU, I think, something like that. Um, okay. But actually, I gave up. Um, it didn't work really from the first time um, mm -hmm. and actually a raspberry pi is not that expensive so mm -hmm. i'd rather spend my time on working on the thing itself um, mm -hmm. if you look into a raspberry pi 3 which is a previous generation with not a lot of memory mm -hmm. but they are not that expensive then it's I think it's easier to try it immediately on on the device itself Right. So, Frank, I'll take just two more questions because now more questions are coming in and then we'll uh, <laughs> close it because we already have overrun the time. So the first one is, uh, are there any plans, if you know about any plans, to uh, put it in a Docker container? I think that should be already available uh, if they're Do talking about the software. Um, Docker on Raspberry Pi definitely works. That's done okay. a lot. Uh, so people run web mm -hmm. servers on it. People run mm -hmm. any kind of application. So running Docker on uh, a Raspberry Pi, no problem mm -hmm. at all. Um, mm -hmm. With Pi4j, yeah, maybe I didn't do it yet, but yeah, it should definitely mm -hmm. be possible somehow. Yeah. Okay. And the last question is, um, a person wants to know your experience and challenges when you're working with Raspberry Pi. Um, my my first frustrations were to get Java VIX running on Raspberry Pi. Um, and that was just because my knowledge was too limited at that time. Um, so as I said, Java VIX has a lot of um, tweaking depending on the platform. So mm -hmm. the graphical um, layer of Windows, Mac, Raspberry Pi, Linux, it's all very different. So um, there has been done a lot of efforts in the Java VIX community to improve this. So you have different ways of starting a Java VIX application on a Raspberry Pi to make maximum use of the graphical capabilities. Um, but that's also documented now on the Pi4j website. So as I mentioned, so pi4j.com is not only about this Pi4j library, but it's also about mm -hmm. What can you do with Java VIX uh, on a Raspberry Pi? Um, yeah. And there are further improvements ongoing. I know, like, for instance, FXGL, the game engine, 
um, in the Swiss University, there is a project ongoing to see how far we can go with uh, frames per second to have real smooth uh, game playback on a Raspberry Pi, depending on the mode mm -hmm. that you started with and, and how you best uh, run such an application. Thank you so much, Frank. It was an amazing session and you have been very patient answering all the questions. And I want to thank everyone who is watching, who is participating, asking the questions. Uh, thank you all. And uh, Frank, if you have any uh, closing remarks. Um, I invite you to, yeah, if you find the Raspberry Pi, I think a lot of developers have them in their closet, uh, somewhere in their drawer and they don't use them. <laughs> Take them out. <laughs> Just look for an SD card, pick, pick, pick the latest uh, uh, Raspberry Pi OS, put it on and start experimenting. You don't have to do it in Java. Believe me, it will be fun. But if you're a Python developer, mm -hmm. go ahead with Python. There are different ways you can do this kind of stuff, uh, but just use them. There is a ship sh shortage. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, use it. <laughs> a lot of people are jealous at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So again, thank you so much, Frank and everyone. It was a great session and I'm looking forward to taking out my Raspberry Pi from the closet and working with it. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Have fun with it. Thank you. And everyone yeah, thank watching. You. Bye. Until bye. next time. Bye.